So Palantir has just released another set of impressive financials, but there is a hidden Easter egg in it all with the company announcing a $1 billion stock buyback. Hi again, everyone. I hope you're all doing really well. So Palantir has just released their um, Q2 results for 2023, and they were pretty good. They came in at the top end of analyst estimates uh, with $533 million in revenue, which represented a 13% year-over-year growth. Um, and they had an overall net profit for the, um, or net income based on generally accepted accounting principles uh, of $28 million for the quarter. So uh, pretty good. It means that they've had three consecutive quarters of profitability. Uh, and, you know, it's sort of showing the signs that Palantir is following through with what people were expecting, that it's going to really kind of start to take off, uh, particularly as AI uh, gets picked up more and more by other industries. So looking into those numbers a little bit better, uh, a little bit more, I should say, um, you know, the company saw commercial revenue jump 10% year over year, government revenue jump 15% year over year, and overall customer count went up 38% year over year. Uh, so more promising signs from the company. Um, and, you know, with forward-looking statements have actually kind of said that they expect that the next quarter, so they're going to, is going to see them have, uh, you know, income of around $576 million. So another significant jump from this Q2 number. So uh, all looks pretty promising for Palantir in the sense of how it's tracking financially. Uh, obviously, a big part of that is, like we've already been saying, is that the adaptation or the adoption, I should say, of AI by uh, lots of other companies. Now, with that, the... Alex Karp put out a letter to shareholders sort of saying um, that the company is in a real position of strength and they want to take advantage of that and that's why they're going to initiate this $1 billion stock buyback, the first they've done as a publicly listed company. Now, it's really interesting. Like, I'm a bit torn on this move. Like, Okay, obviously the buyback is going to be great. It represents about 2.5% of um, the company's float. So you could see a build up in the underlying value of the stock through that. But, you know, if the company's really in a position of strength right now, which, I, you know, I believe it really is, but $1 billion right now, instead of initiating a stock buyback, wouldn't it perhaps be better to put that money into um, funneling more growth and taking advantage of the opportunities? Because while Palantir does have a significant moat in terms of uh, its positioning in the AI sector, and, you know, obviously with the clients that they have, um, one thing you got to consider is that it is becoming an increasingly crowded marketplace and more and more companies are getting into the AI space. So Palantir is going to start seeing a bit more competition there, particularly in the commercial sector. So perhaps maybe that $1 billion might have been better used for, um, you know, f funding more growth opportunities to, you know, maybe escalate the growth if they could find other things to do. So they've also said, you know, that they're still talking with 300 uh corporate clients right now about the adaptation of using their AI platforms uh, in their businesses. And I've sort of said on here before that the one thing that um, Palantir really has um, an advantage of over when it comes to AI is that they get their platform and their reputation means that they, you know, are a company that has a secure use of data by um, their customers. And, you know, that's a real big consideration. Like I've got a few friends who work in the financial services and, you know, they're actually not allowed to use platforms like ChatGPT and stuff like that, just because there's no security over where their data is going. And they have obviously sensitive information. Palantir kind of bridges that gap to an extent. They've been doing it with the government. They, you know, they are a reliable company. They've been around for over 20 years. Uh, and so they really do have an advantage here in this space. Um, so I would have perhaps liked to have seen them use that $1 billion to help you know, further push home that advantage that, you know, it's perceived and show that it is realistic because that would channel into more natural growth for the company and, you know, accelerate revenue. But at the same time, I'm not going to say no to a stock buyback um, of $1 billion, uh, which represents about 2.5% of the share float, a little bit more. So, you know, positive earnings day for Palantir. Um, there are some, you know, some pretty ambitious uh, price targets for the company at the moment. Some people are over $25 per share, which, you know, over the next year wouldn't be, you know, terrible growth. But I feel like after these results and with the stock buyback, there's going to be some revision and we might start seeing um, some higher uh, estimates for where the company is going. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on Palantir's latest earnings down in the comments below. Um, do you agree with the stock buyback? Do you think it's the right time to do it? Or do you feel like that money could be better used by the company elsewhere? Um, share your thoughts down in the comments below. Until next time, everyone, may the markets trade in your favour. Cheers.